In this video, we'll be doing an overview on the Sanger digeoxy method, which is the first generational sequencing. After that, we'll be going into videos on the various types of next generational sequencing. In order to understand the Sanger digeoxy method of sequencing, a basic understanding of the DNA molecule and its synthesis is needed. The DNA molecule is made up of polymers called nucleotides. These nucleotides are made up of three basic sections. The backbone of the DNA molecule is composed of the 5-ring deoxyribose sugar and the phosphate on the 5' prime end of the sugar. The reason the sugar is called deoxy is because a ribose sugar usually has two OH groups on the second and third prime end of the sugar, but instead there is not an OH group on the second end of the DNA sugar. Hence, deoxy. The third part of the nucleotide is the nucleoside base of either an adenine, thymine, guanine, or cytosine. The polymerase enzyme adds nucleotides to the DNA chain by connecting the phosphate on the 5' prime end of the new nucleotide sugar to the OH on the 3' prime end of the previous nucleotide sugar. This reaction releases a water molecule and the polymerase enzyme will continue to add another nucleotide to the new DNA strain. In the Sanger method, modified nucleotides are used. These nucleotides are called dideoxy because not only is the second prime end of the ribose sugar without an OH group, but the three prime end is also without an OH group. Since the three prime OH group is required to elongate the DNA chain by adding the phosphate end of the next nucleotide to it, without it, the DNA chain will end. The DNA sample is divided into four separate sequencing reactions, containing all four of the standard deoxynucleotides and the DNA polymerase. To each reaction is added only one of the four dideoxynucleotides, while three other nucleotides are ordinary ones. After many cycles of copying, all of the possible chain termination molecules are produced. The reaction has stopped at every base, putting it in a more sensible order. Four separate reactions are needed in this process to test all four DDNTPs. Following rounds of template DNA extension from the bound primer, the resulting DNA fragments are heat denatured and separated by size using gel electrophoresis. What this does is tell us the length of the strands since the smaller molecules of DNA travel faster through the gel than the large strands. Therefore, DNA sequencers carry out capillary electrophoresis for size separation. Detection and recording of dye fluorescence and data output as fluorescence peak trace chromatograms. This way, the nucleotide at a given part of the sequence can be determined using the fluorescence given at a given length of the sequence in the gel. With this method, it is very time consuming and labor extensive. It is also only able to put out short sequences at a time, and only one at a time as well. Therefore, faster multi-parallel sequencing has since been developed and named next-generational sequencing. These new methods are discussed in the next videos. This is the work cited for this video. Here are some recommended videos to watch in order to further understand how the Sanger didexy method works. The next video is on the next generational sequencing method, 454 pyro sequencing.